G'day mate. Now this is the um, tattooed saw I did the other day. So there's a T just there somewhere. We can't see the T on that. Um, five spikes. Um, it performs really, really well. I'm surprised how well it did. And it um, tuned up, tuned up um, 13,600 revs. So it went so well, I don't know why. Um, the other saw, it done 14,300 revs, but it was running a bit lean. But I'd like to know, when something stock, stock stand runs so well, it's, it's not, it's a good idea to find out why they run that so well. Um, some saws, um, brand new, don't run that well, and I want to know what the numbers are on this and find out why. Now, the piston's been tested, I put lines on the piston you see and see. Now, that would help, but base gas is complete. Apart from that, this thing's stock stand, so um, I put a um, heavy duty aftermarket F4, I'll show you that. If you watch the video, you already know that. That's just a crap going on the matter. But the old, old um, chainsaw. So I want to know why. Um, I've wanted you to a little chainsaw like this before. 45 cc's. Um, it didn't perform anything like this. It's all clean in there, really. That's how it works. But, um, I don't know why um, this, this still performs the way it does. So I'm going to pull apart on camera. Have a look. Because um, the numbers on this will transfer over to a small, like a house phone 55, something like that. Um, it's any small man. Uh, 43 um, mil wide piston. Um, not sure about the stroke, but it works out to be uh, 45 cc or 46, like that. So I'll pull this apart, pretty good will it, find out. Now, I had problems with um, this tensioner thing the other day. I'll go back to front, for sure. This, this part here actually tightened that onto the bar, so that's tight now. The part of the back, that's um, the tensioner for the chain. So if I undo that, I can undo the tensioner. A bit more, so that's why that works. So, if I do it up now, the bar would loose. So, that's how it works. So, I didn't realize I had back to front, but um, that's working now. So, I can do more testing. I thought it was broken, it wasn't broken at all. But it does perform really, really well for a stock stand, um, muffler motor, and all that crap. The muffler's quiet, it's not ready at all. It's a very um, well mounted tool. I'm surprised. Uh, two of them that work really well. So I'm gonna pull the button and have a look what's going on, how it works and why. Because I've been so it's like a brand new motor, so, but um, it's one of those things I need to know why, so I can actually add more performance. So to give you an idea, I have for saws in the future coming up. Big ball, um, big ball um, for a 395 HP. So 58mm. And that pop-up piston. Oh yeah, highway two. That we're coming soon. Just things like that. You can make small, small motor go really well. And what you can do with a big motor. Let's find out what's, what's inside this thing. Why is why is. So I'm going to pull down. I'll be back in a sec. So you know, there's no funny business. I bring you in and parts I think are important. So I pull the cylinder off. Get the muffler first. But, um, I want to know why this thing performs so well. So I'll pull the brackets off here. Braces. Brace bolt. Had a party last night for my 20 year old daughter. It was good fun. Family got together. Good food. Done a lot of singing. Kids are very artistic. Like to um, sing and party, carry on. Country western stuff. Stuff I'm not really into. More, more uh, ACDC, this type of stuff. Heavy metal. There's a stock standard muffler, haven't dusted it at all. It's even got a, um, a spark arrestor. I'll show you that, never seen it before. Never seen it since you ever. Come off like that. And that's a spark arrestor. Like, really, really different. Box there, getting the rabbit to come back off. There you go, that's off. Guess it came with, you know, inside the muffler. Quite stand. It's too hold back. I tried doing that before. I found the performance is less, but um, it's working on this one. So a big hole top, big hole bottom. So nothing on the side. Um, actually, um, a bit of um carbon build up on the side there. So maybe what do I see? Normally got uh, holes in the side. So I'm wondering, is this what's causing the performance? So something to think about. 
Muffles have a lot of power in muffles if you do it the right way. So pull it back in, pull the other bolt out. Good little nose to pull apart. I like them. Rebolt your valve, the V72 XP. Pull that pup there off. The rubber bolt there for the car be intake. The bolt out of it. The intake on these are both really hard. I was surprised they even worked. Like they're really, I need a new replacing really. I'm surprised they ain't break now. Which they still could break. Do have spares there. There you go, coming off. We could could have come off with the cylinder though. If you can't see me guys, I've had a stroke, so I'm doing my best. I find it very difficult to talk and look down which uh, can't control why you're dribbling stuff like that. Pain in the ass it really is. I'm Australian, so I've got an accent, I suppose. But I understand all you guys, so. I don't know, I can't say really Scottish. It's a bit hard sometimes, but you can take your time. Get the hole for you. Let's see what the tattooed piston's doing. How perform. They're all off. Give it a tap of the rubber mallet. Should pop off. What's a carby? I like to leave the carby on because um, the needle and seat holds the fuel in the line. If you take the um, carby off, it's, it makes petrol come out all the time. It stinks. And there you go. Silver's coming off. I haven't done that uh, what, a week or so ago. So I pull it off. There you go. So this is a tattooed piston. I would like to run more time on this, but um, it seems to work. I, I spent more time on the grooves going on the very, very edges. So, not a tattoo as much as I do with the um, 62cc, the small motor. But um, there's a tattoo there. One, two, three, three of them. Also, I would like to get a, um, a dome wheel off a um, on a, uh, tile cutters and all that. And run a line cleanly, no grooves, no lumps of bump. Just a, a nice clean glue, clean groove. Like swipe, swipe, swipe. Um, there'd be better designed, I think. Bit of crap in the motor, some dust and stuff. More than I thought it would be, actually. It's weird. I put a, a rubber grommet just to where the air filter goes down. Control that. But then, um, I'll pull the rings off that. And we'll have a look what the numbers are on the cylinder. So the cylinder is a um, a two transfer chamber cell. Uh, I can't see no curve in the transfers at all. They're like a brick wall. See that way there. This slams down like a brick wall. So it's nothing special. Not poured at all. But we'll have all the numbers and find out why it performs so bloody good. The motor's like brand new still. Yeah, that's it, no gasket. So we'll work out the squish first. I'll put this back on with no rings. Work the squish out and we'll work out what the numbers are. And we'll go from there. And that way you know how to make our store perform. Basically stand. Right, I'll get back to you in a sec. So I'm just trying to clean up the um, base of the cylinder. I don't want um, gasket glue on the cylinder. Um, bending things that would face to face, metal to metal, clean. Just scrape it off best I can. I'm not going to do both up super tight, but remember if you put something um, on and pull it down and on top of something and bends it, you'll bend your seals from the four bolts and that's how you clean up best you can. Razor blade, whatever. Easy fingernail, pop nail. Give it a break kind of. I'll loosen stuff up. Hmm. Interesting, the thing before, I wonder why. I'll clean it up, I get the cylinder back on so I can do the groove on. Alright, hang on guys. The groove will coming up. I thought I'd um, even pull off the intake boots so I can actually see probably the intake when I'm doing the groove wheel, because they are small. Kind of like that, so make it easy for me to see exactly what's going on. Even though the intake on these are curves, but I know how much these normally have intake and stuff like that. 
So I'm curious how much intake they have. They've got quite big um, um, transfers for what they are, because it's a small motor. That transfer is almost the same size as um, a 62, so maybe it's what makes this perform. I'm not quite sure, but we'll soon see. So, put this back on, a couple of bolts, and we'll work out why. And that rings, just sit like that. And I'll put the bolts through that, and we'll do a um, Google and find what's going on. I'll, I'll set it up and then zero in. Okay, I think I've got zeroed in. Check it out. So, be 37 degrees 37 I'm at the same angle both ways 37 again I hope yep close enough 37 and a puff 37 yep the same right so that's the gradient so we'll do the intake first one with the numbers I just all down to I had a chance I put the full boss in, by the way, to make sure it's nice and tight. I'll be over here. Get the torch. You know, I put the torch in my mouth. I should be here to get torch on where the hell it is. But, um, I'll put it like that, I suppose. So, piston going up and down. Uh, piston going back up and down, so. I bring that in there, when I get to where it should be, it's up cracking there. So, I'll zoom that in for you. You have an idea of what I'm looking at. That's just starting to crack, alright? So what's that on the degree? It's actually pretty spicy. Let me back it. So we're looking at 75 degrees. Now, I can imagine that's quite good, actually, because um, I think myself it would be 76, so... That's pretty good. Now I might pour this more, or what I can do, I like the on off arrangement. You look at your port. The port there is um, a big U shape. So what you can do is you um, put a ring there and make sure that port is um, straight across it. And that will make, give you 75 degrees still, but it will open and shut instantly. So that will increase your speed, which is a mild port job, but that's why you can increase it like that. So we'll do the exhaust. Uh, we'll do the exhaust. I'll do it this way. First ray of light, because I don't normally do first ray of light, I do bleeding light. So, put the torch in the exhaust. Then what's going on yet? Can't see the light. Still in sec though. Right, it's starting to bleed. First ray of light there. So that's it. 102, I suppose. Yeah, 102. But to, for me, I, if I was to do it really, I'd be looking about there, it's bloody. So we're looking at 100. We need 100 up over there. So yeah, 102 is what this is. It's pretty hot, um, pretty hot little motor that is. I'm quite happy with that. 102, yep. Yeah. That's, that's factory, by the way. Now the transfer should be 125. I guess I'll work that too. Now, I'll get that worked out. I'll um, pull the cylinder back off, put a ring inside the cylinder. Get back out. Pull the ring off and put it in the cylinder and I'll wind the motor over until the piston hits the um, ring and work out exactly where the um, transfers open up and I'll work that way. That's how exact numbers. So I'll do that. Before I do that, I'll um, work out the switch of those. Recording. Yep, so I work out the screws first. Different solar. I recently bought small solar so I can actually do a more precise um, screws with my soak cutters. let have a fresh piece. Right, get the piece off. It's been used, it's squished already. Right, so put that in. I put the side up where the carbon always sits. Make sure the piston's going up. I'll do it. I normally roll the motor backwards because the piston and holds the um, side from going to the exhaust pipe. So the piston's now in front of the um, exhaust. So I show the piston, put, shove the side in, hit the back wall, and rotate it, rotate it over. When I can't move it no more, which could be quite tight, I'm not sure yet. Yeah, tight. 
So what I'll do is um, get a spark plug tool, put the spark plug tool on the flywheel just there and rotate any clockwise or clockwise, just say clockwise and find out what it is and rock it on that solar. So that's pretty, pretty good to wish. Basically it's a delete. And that way I can work out what exactly what it is. And I haven't done nothing except to remove the base gasket. Base, base gasket. It's not easy guys to when you had a stroke. It's hard to learn to talk again. Leads to my problem I suppose. Right now that's done there. It's funny, I met me, you meet guys at the party last night. Guys, they talk to you about certain things, their desires, their aspirations, what they're going to do in the future. And, you know, brain fog. They're not quite sure what's going on. I'm not sure if it's the um, COVID vaccine, um, vaccination, but, yeah, something's not right. So, yeah, I, I've said, I've said part of this. If you want to take something that makes you feel better, now it's brought my memory back. Without this, I would have killed myself. But, yeah. The young boys, they just seem to have a problem in their head. And I'm not surprised. You know, the cost of houses is being out of a million dollars. Um, trying to get stuff they want, cars. And after all that, they have a family. They can't afford kids. It's just, it's, they criminal. It's dumb, dumb. The way the government set things up is just stupid. So, what have we got for squish? Right, 38 there. So, it's not crazy, but it's nice. So, I could take more off that. Take the 30th hour easy and still have a nice little hot motor. Yeah, 30th hour. I'll show you that. Bit hard to show you. Yeah, it's just squishing in now. The 30th hour. So I'll roll that. 38 and we'll do the um, transfers now. I'll pause you at that. A lot of people know, like, it's weird. You're going to buy a house, fine. When I bought my house, $95,000. I know I thought that was quite dear, but. We can afford that. Now, I'm not talking about houses, I'm talking about farms. If you want to be a farmer and you want to be young and healthy and do farm workers, it's not easy, guys. How do you afford a farm with the prices things are and you actually afford to live, buy stuff? I'd be scared. I wouldn't want to do it. A farmer can get drought, disease, all sorts of stuff, and the government don't care. They really don't. They want you to do stuff, but they want you to um, take the bet. The bet is, if you perform and you do everything right, you make money, but every year is a bet. Could be flood, a cyclone, whatever else, tornado. There's a lot of things that could go wrong. And, you know, we're not getting young farmers no more. So, we're, I'm really worried in the future for people to eat and live and eat. It's not going to work the way anything is. The government has got no idea of our future. Our future's, you know, war and all that. But, we gotta have food. If you don't have food, you don't survive. It's stupid, it's crazy. So I'll roll this over. Well, normally, I know they are 125. See what she is. I'll line up the 125 mark. There, back off to 180. Have a look. Yep, did 125. So. I'll show you that. So there's a ring. Seeing dead on 125. So I'm happy with that. Make sure both sides. Alright, so we've got 27 degrees below it, it looks like. But that's what this motor is. It's, it's weird. I want to know this motor has um, a motor that works well, but why? I'm not quite sure. It just performs. I've never seen a two transfer chamber motor work. I rev like that. Um, the squish is pretty good, but the last one I did had a huge squish. It was 60 something thousand squish, so I wasn't impressed at all. Um, that was on Froden. Um, so I put Froden in a, um, a 62cc crank, 34mm it was, um, to make it rev. But this one here be a lot, a lot of mucking around to do that. But yeah, for what this is, I'm surprised. Is there a brand name? I find if they have a brand name, they're proud of what they're doing, so it's a Y with M at the top. So if I ever see this again, I'll buy that. So you got 45 at the top there. I don't know what that off. That's 45 just there. That's the um, size of the motor, so you'll see um, 
So that the width of that piston is 43 mils, and you'll probably see on the actual Conrad, 43 on the Conrad. Should have a mark on that. Can I show you? These little motors are pretty good when it comes to stuff like that. Yeah, 43 on the actual Conrad or connecting rod. So, don't you see that? Try to zoom you in. Pretty easy to get um, the right to parts if you know what you're looking for. So, on that rod there. Yeah, 43. Hold the right way. Put the hard there, you go. 43. So, that's what this is. 43 is the um, 45cc or 46, depending who's what the cylinder says on the, the stickers. But 45cc. Yeah, really crap in the motor and the bottom. Source. That's just the old stuff. I don't think mine that saw us in there was pretty good with that. But anyway, that's what this is. But I'll have a look at this motor, mate. And I'll um, have a good thing about it. And I'll port this a bit. And I'll see um, what I get out of this motor. And a bit harder. I know all these motors, um, it's to do with the intake. Now, intake and these, I know I can go up a little bit. Um, the um, tonsil there to hold the um, lower ring on the piston, if I don't touch that. Put um, some trenches in the top of the cylinder wall, or intake port, you say. Go down lower, square her up. Yeah, probably go 80 degrees, I suppose. Go wider. Exhaust. Exhaust, it's weird, the exhaust. Really a very flat roof exhaust. I'll probably go a bit higher on the exhaust, 1 degree or so. Make it a bit wider. Because being a small motor, these things can rev hard, really hard, and the rings won't fall out, so might go a bit wider. Now they'll go. But yeah, see how she goes. And I go, this one back, back against the other one, and see how they go. Alright, guys, as usual, thank you for watching. Over and out.